Goodwill hunting. Oh, so another way to say you couldn't manage to hold an actual job? <laughs> Goodwill is for people that can't afford things, and man, that's just taking all the stuff. <laughs> really? That's not what Goodwill is for. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. <laughs> Hop into my spaceship, thrift stores are waiting. He wild enough to sell it, then tell Wyatt that I'll take it. Until love and you will see that. Today we'll be looking at the issue of resellers are scumbags and they steal from poor people. I have gotten some interesting comments lately. You have got to hear about these interactions. But first, I want to take a look at some eBay sales. After hiring an editor, which I just talked about on my last video, I'm already seeing a good increase in my eBay sales and I'm really excited about that. Here we go. Hold on first. Jenna, do you think I'm a scumbag? Well, do you want the truth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little sunburned. My goodness. I just got back from the beach. But guys, I have a uh, I had a great weekend. I went to the beach, like I said, before I went on the trip, knowing that I wasn't going to list anything new for a few days on my store, I actually set a markdown sale on my store. And I'll give you some more details about that in a second, but it produced 16 really good sales over the weekend, and I am going to very quickly show you those items. I had $620 in sales on these 16 items. Let's go ahead and look at them. Okay guys, first item was this really cool vintage Coca-Cola bottle. It says, can't beat the feeling. I sold it for $15 free shipping and I only paid 10 cents for it. All right, this one's kind of difficult to get rid of. This is the foot putter. I talked about it a little while back, but I only paid a couple dollars for this and it sold for the full price of $40 plus shipping. So I'm pretty happy about that. These are novelty putters. So if you ever see a putter that's shaped like something, um, I think a while back I found one shaped like a tooth. Those are going to be worth some pretty good money. So pretty cool sale. Next sale is this set of two seven and a half pound plates. These, these sold for $9 plus shipping and I only have $3 into them. I got a, a lot of weights and most of them have sold. So at this point it's all profit. Next is this pretty cool vintage gear sports jacket. These won't sell quick, but um, it was a good profit. I sold it for $31.50 plus shipping, and I think I only paid $5.75 for it. This is a pair of Nike Air Force Ones. These were actually given to me, so I have nothing into them, and they sold for $60 free shipping. The Square Space, no, Square Strike Golf Club. I just picked this up in North Carolina, so I had $4 into it. It sold for $49.50 plus shipping. This was actually a pretty satisfying sale because I had a buyer on, re on eBay reach out to me before it sold and said, you'll never get that for it. You know, I can go find that cheaper. And uh, I stuck to my guns and it sold basically the next day. So happy about it. All right, this lot of three or a pack of three Frank Sinatra CDs sold for $8 plus shipping. Not the greatest pickup, but it was sealed and I thought eh, it might sell for something. I think I only paid a dollar for it. All right, this Calphalon pot uh, saucepan. It's a vintage Calphalon. You don't see a lot of them that are dark like that. It sold for $28 plus shipping. And this is another item that I pretty much got for free. So. Yeah, all profit. Okay, two packs of ink right here. It's a blue and a pink. The same buyer bought both. So they paid me $24. I had $2 into each of them. So $4 into $24 free shipping. This pair of Converse All-Stars sold for $13 plus shipping. They're pretty cool and um, probably would have sold for more, but they weren't in the greatest condition. So even though they're cool, they have a cool pattern, they only sold for $13 plus shipping. I think I only paid $6.50 for these. All right, this vintage 1996 Olympics t-shirt sold for $22.50 plus $5 shipping. I just picked this up recently for $1.50 from Goodwill and it actually only took like one or two days to sell. So I'm happy about that. An awesome sale here. This is a Bregg Polar Care Cube. I picked this up in North Carolina when we were just there for $5 and it sold for $67.50 plus shipping. That thing is not heavy, so it won't cost a whole lot to ship. What you have to know about this though is that for some reason I tried to list it with Bregg in the title and it denied my listing and I guess bureaued it. So I took Bregg out of the title and it let me list it. So I'm not sure 
why I guess it might be considered a medical device, but it's just really just a cold pack. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it was a good sale. All right, a pair of Clark's Thinsulate ankle boots. These are a women's pair of shoes and they sold for $20 plus shipping. And I think I might've paid seven or $8 for them. Another t-shirt that I just listed the other day, it took about two days to sell. It is a vintage Las Vegas t-shirt and it sold for $9 plus $5 shipping. So nothing crazy, but I only paid a dollar or a dollar 50 for it. And it took only a couple days to sell. So I'm happy with it. All right, this town of due west hat right here sold for five dollars plus five dollar shipping i only paid a dollar for this at goodwill i think the town of due west is actually here in south carolina so cool hat but not a huge um, sale okay final sale guys is this toshiba vcr i paid four dollars for it so very cheap and it sold for 38 dollars plus shipping and had the remote with it um, obviously I had to test it and everything worked. So I'm very happy with that sale. It's not a very heavy one. So again, shouldn't cost too much to ship, but it sold for $38 plus shipping. So there's all the uh, packages I have that are gonna be going uh, through UPS. And then these are all of my packages that will be picked up uh, going USPS. So again, I think I mentioned it quickly that I had $620 in total sales, which puts that around at around $300 profit for the weekend in a basically like a two and a half day span. So incredible weekend i always think it's a good rule of thumb before you go on a trip if you know you're going to be out of town the days leading up to the trip go ahead and list quite a few items and that will get kind of the algorithm pumping and then on the day that you're going to leave begin a markdown sale on your ebay store and I just do 10% on all of my items. I might exclude a couple of items that I don't want to sell any cheaper, but for the most part, all 400 and whatever items, I mark them down 10% and I go ahead and extend that sale through like basically the day that I return at midnight or right before midnight. And I think that's a great way. I've done that pretty much every time I ever go out of town for a couple of days, I try to do that. And usually it ends pretty, pretty well. To, to pack up 16 sales, on a Monday from the weekend is a good weekend for me. I can contribute that to the markdown sale for sure. And the days leading up to it when I kind of listed extra stuff. So guys, real quick, before we get back into these comments, let me show you which video all of these comments are coming from. It's a video I posted about, let's say it says five days ago, right there you can see it has 39,000 views currently. And it's called Goodwill Hunting for Stuff to Flip on eBay. It's a very simple video. Walking up to Goodwill on the hunt for stuff to flip on eBay. This is my full-time job, so let me know if you have any questions. First item is this Ken Griffey Jr. Nintendo 64 game. I'll pay $2.94 and it'll sell for $10 to $12. Not huge profit. This Rock Band box looks interesting. I looked in it and there is definitely drums in there. Not sure what else. It's $14.94. Even on the lower end, I'm looking at about $75. Finally, this Summit Hats Cowboy Hat. Only $4.94. It sells for about $40 on eBay. Okay, $22. Follow for more. So, yeah, it's like, it was a very simple video. I, I, nothing crazy. All right, Jenna, so let's go back into the first uh, comment that I talked about at the very beginning of the video. Jenna's gonna read it one more time, and then I'm gonna tell you what I said back to them. So go ahead and say the name of the commenter also. All right, the mediocre painter said, go to all hunting. Oh, so another way to say you couldn't manage to hold an actual job. <laughs> okay, here's what I said back. I just said, this is a funny one with a laughing emoji. You have no idea. So I thought I would, you know, I kept that pretty subtle. Yeah. But this sparked uh, some more comments. So this thread started and a couple different people chimed in. Ocean Man 11, no, 111, said, It's kind of sad that people like you drive the prices up at places like Goodwill who sell them for the less fortunate. <laughs> so then my comment back was like the little rolling eyes emoji. <laughs> All right, then we got Felly, Felly Gaming. I understand why you don't care slash get annoyed, but they're right, bro. And then I just said to him, they're not. I go to thrift stores every day. I rarely see poor people. I put, I put the word poor in quotations. Which is the truth. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there might be poor people, but also poor people could be completely disguised to look like they have money. And then people that have money could dress like a poor person. So, just dumb. <laughs> All right, next one. All right. Jeremiah Schaefer said, Goodwill is for people that can't afford things and man's just taking all the stuff. 
<laughs> so then I put the the rolling eyes emoji again, and I put an arrow to it, and I said, me rolling my eyes. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> really? And then the bleep? Who's the person? Oh, Spongebob. <laughs> 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 All right. So really? And then the bleep? And then it says, that's not what Goodwill is for. So to that one, I just said, prove it. And... <laughs> This was hours ago, earlier today, and uh, they haven't they haven't commented back. They so proved it. The last one and my favorite: stay in school, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so to the to this comment, and that was by Karma, mm -hmm. with a K. That's how it's spelled, anyways. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, well. All okay. right. So Karma with a K said uh, said stay in school, kids. I said yeah, stay in a system that teaches you how to do the bare minimum. Yeah. They replied, feels bad. You're on the nah education. I think what they're saying is you, you're against education. Yeah. I said, I love education. I got extremely educated about entrepreneurship and owning a business mm -hmm. on my own with mentors outside of the school system. Because I didn't mm -hmm. like I didn't take business or anything in college. Yeah, and I can say as like someone who went through the school system and like why it says I was an overachiever, I, you know. It was awesome for me, but I learned more outside of the school system yeah. than I did inside. Yes, um, so. definitely. And I think what we're, what Wyatt's doing and what a lot of resellers are doing is a lot more difficult than just staying in a 9-to-5 job. So it's it really is more difficult. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. Then Karma yes. said to that, and yet you're a reseller with like the clapping hands. And this was the one comment that I put a little bit of thought into. I mean, at this point it was past like just kind of being silly and I was like, I'm going to give I'm going to give Karma a real response. So, I said, you know, so she said reselling or he said reselling, you became a reseller, whatever. You are a reseller. I said, which is a business where I am the owner, the the, I pay taxes, I have income, expenses, I deal with customers, I source items, I process those items by cleaning them, I didn't have to pack and ship, or I have to pack and ship them, I've done thousands of transactions and have 100% customer feedback. Then I went on, also I have a three-year-old daughter who absolutely loves me because I'm able to be home with her most of the time, I have a wife who also owns her own business and works from home, so as a family we are able to do life together daily and still run small businesses. And the last thing I said was, also, we're adopting a second child. When that time comes, we'll be able to hop on the road. And because we run our own businesses, we, we can, can do that. Yeah. And then I said at the very end, but if you would rather me put in 50 hours a week behind a desk, then, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> anyways, I thought that was funny. <laughs> and then honorable mention was just someone called Shanoobs who said, I feel like it's pretty scummy. <laughs> and then I gave that comment a heart, and then they said... They commented again and said, this dude actually hearted comments calling him a scumbag. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. So, guys, this whole issue, uh, first of all, I'm 99% I'm of this is me just kind of having fun with it. I'm not, like, <laughs> I don't care. These people who comment stuff, I don't even know them. And if you've ever been on TikTok, you just learn very quickly that people are going to give you their opinion. And it's mm -hmm. honestly more fun to comment back and provoke them a little bit because then you get more comments and it actually helps it helps, <laughs> it helps your, your video perform better. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so 99% of this is me having fun. But in all honesty, there is a real issue um, out there of people thinking that resellers are scumbags and they take from poor people. And I'm very curious as to what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd love for, for you guys to, to tell a quick story of like an experience that you've had and how you've dealt with this because Again, I don't think the issue is going to uh, go away. And, you know, what's funny is I I'm, I'm never get this in thrift stores. Like, I go to thrift stores every day, and, like, no one in thrift stores, yeah, even if they know I'm a reseller, cares. But it's these people on the Internet who care. But yeah. the reality is Goodwill, for example, is a business that makes a profit, a huge profit. Yeah, <laughs> They have their job connections program, and that's great. But they're not you can't get that twisted. They're not out here 80% trying to help people, 20% yeah. business. They're like a business. They're a huge business. So anyways, regardless of all of that, I am curious if you've had this same experience and what your thoughts are on it. Um, again, I was just kind of having some fun, being silly. Jenna yeah. thought it was a little bit cringy. It is a little cringy to me. The conflict is a little cringy. But I will say, 
Wyatt is probably the one person I know who can do this and it'd be just hilarious. Like he does not get angry. It's, so it's totally fun. Literally just for fun. It's so much fun to me. You should get on my TikTok <laughs> and you should see the stuff I say to those people. Um, like when I said to the one person, prove it. I really am curious, like prove it. Like give me some statistics <laughs> or something. But anyways, let me know what you think guys.